how do we best gauge customer demand and get those first set of customers? There are a couple rules that I think if you follow are going to help out a lot. And so here they are. We all do our own back of the envelope market analysis when we're thinking about how to get customers, which is we share our ideas with our friends and our network and people that we know. And we gauge those folks' responses to see whether this is something that we should continue with or something that we should stop. And so maybe you have an idea for a business and you go out and you share it with 100 people you know, which is a fantastic way to validate whether people may or may not be interested. The thing that I found that's really interesting is that the no's are very valuable, but you almost have to completely discount the yeses. Meaning, if a hundred out of a hundred people tell you that something's a good idea, don't count that as a positive, count it as a neutral. Meaning, you just don't know whether it'll work or not. Because in an idea concept, in an idea phase, people will say yes to all sorts of things that they'll say that they'll buy, say that they'll use, but when it comes to it, to actually get somebody to take money out of their wallet and give you their hard-earned money for your product or service is hard. And so the yeses aren't often as directionally helpful. Now on the other hand, if you have an idea for a product or service and you talk to 100 people about it and you get 100 no's, then I think that's directionally valuable. Meaning if everybody up front will tell you, I am not willing to pay for your product or service, then you may want to focus on changing what your idea or concept is then. Now, there are exceptions to that rule. I'm sure if someone explained the idea of Twitter before it existed to people, folks would say, well, that's crazy. I would never do it. And so you can't just not go forward with something because other people don't believe in the idea. You have to trust your own internal guidance the most. But on balance, What's really important to remember is that as you ask people for feedback about your ideas, if you ask them if they would use your product or service, discount the yeses. They're not gonna be that valuable in the long run. It's neutral. And the only way you're really gonna see if somebody is gonna use your product or service, pay for your product or service, is by putting it in market and seeing if people put their money where their mouth is. One of the ways in which you can start to gain, get this feedback, other than just asking your friends, is you can rely on different services, one of them being SurveyMonkey. And they've got a great tool where you can create a survey and you can then pay for responses from a target audience. So whether it's a business audience or uh, folks that work out of their house or people that have a specific interest or hobby, you can target them and you can ask them what they think about their idea. And so even if you don't have people in your own personal network that you can use to vet your idea or gauge whether you're getting customers, you can rely on other services to get those responses. And just remember, the no's are often much more valuable than the yes's. Focus on a very small set of customers that care a lot about your product. If you can find a small group of folks that are really engaged with your product or service and will really ra rave about it, then you know that you have the seeds for something that could become much larger. So at first, don't focus on quantity, but focus on getting a small set of users, maybe 10, 50, 100 customers that are gonna absolutely love your product. And until folks love your product that much that they wanna tell their friends and their peers about it, maybe don't try to go get the rest of the customers. The other point of this is that we're often always best served going after niche audiences to start. So a lot of times when we start a new business or create a new product, we think, well, if this had applicability to the widest audience possible, then I would be more successful because I'd have more customers. Where in fact, it's easiest to find your initial audience by being extremely niche. So for example, uh, a lot of folks will come up with ideas for different marketplaces and they'll look at sites like Craigslist or Yelp and they'll see, well, look how common it is in so many different locations and how many different categories. And they'll create their service to start with many different categories and in all these different locations. Well, that's really hard to get traction. And if you look at how Yelp started and Craigslist and other marketplaces like that, they picked one category, which were maybe classifieds or restaurants, and one location like San Francisco or Los Angeles and they started getting penetration for that audience in that location. And then as those folks were really engaged and loved the service for that category, it grew and grew from there. And so to both gauge and get your first set of customers, 
focus on a small set of customers, make sure they love the product, and the more niche, the better. The absolute best way to know whether somebody is gonna pay for your product or service is to offer them that real product. And so much more important than asking people a series of questions in a survey is let people put their money where their mouth is and see if they'll pay for your real life product or service. Now, sometimes we're gonna be in a situation where the product or service isn't ready. Maybe it costs too much money, maybe it's gonna take a little bit of time, and we're trying to get feedback to know whether they're gonna be customers for this thing that we wanna offer or that we wanna create. And so in those cases, a great thing to do is to test your core value proposition. And so in many cases, what folks do with internet companies, they actually launch mocks of products or value propositions of products that don't actually exist. But they gauge the demand from the customers by testing the conversion. So for example, you can put up a web page, you can build a sample landing page for a mobile app, and then you drive traffic into those pages by buying traffic on Google, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and really what you're measuring is the conversion. And the rule of thumb is if one third of the people or more that you drive to your landing page that are already somewhat of a targeted audience, click next or register or want to find out more information, then you're doing well in terms of conversion, which means you have a value proposition that's interesting to people, appealing, and there's a good likelihood that eventually people will want to buy. But on the other hand, if you set up these landing pages and value propositions, and a very small percentage of people take to the headline that you wrote or the benefits to the end user, and they don't click next, or they don't want to register, they don't want to see what it's all about, then you also have directional feedback that you probably are going to have a very difficult time getting customers for that product or service. And so in lieu of having your product ready, you can always test the value proposition of your product and see what people think. One final and simple way to gauge customer demand is to leverage free for your products or service. If you offer your product for free and people are clamoring for it and tons of people want it, you know that you've got a good chance of finding a group of those folks that are gonna pay you for that product eventually. On the other hand though, if you give your product away for free and not a whole lot of people are wanting to take it and it feels more like you've gotta push it on folks and that they're clamoring for it, that they wanna get it from you, then it's a very good directional sign that you're probably gonna have a hard time getting people to pay for your product or service. Now the one caveat to this is that sometimes products or services that cost a lot more money, we get skeptical of if they are free. And so probably for a consumer product that costs lower, you can test it well with free. If on the other hand, you created some SaaS enterprise software that you needed to sell to a large company like Google or GM, and you went to their decision maker or buyer and said, hey, I'm gonna give this to you for free, that actually may scare them. It may make them skeptical because they're not gonna trust their thousands and thousands of employees to use something that somebody's offering to them for free. And so you have to look at the situation and judge what's right. But if you have a consumer product that's not priced very high and you want to gauge customer demand, make it free. And if you find that a large, large group of folks are clamoring for it, then again, you definitely probably have something that if you charge for, people will want to buy. But if on the other hand, people aren't wanting to go after your product or service, they're not asking for it, you feel like you have to push it on them instead of they're trying to take it from you, then you probably need to go back to the drawing board and work on something that's gonna help people even more than what you've already got. The holy grail of starting any new business or launching any new product is getting customers. And if you follow these five simple rules, you will be ahead of the game and have hopefully more success than your counterparts.